Hello and welcome. Welcome. Happy Monday to a special episode of MCAST of this stream. We are talking about the February book club. The book club book is Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. Our book club is a monthly ongoing thing that I started because I read a lot. I read a lot of self-improvement books, nonfiction books about making my life better. And I think it's pretty much the reason why I've gotten as far as I have, however far that is. Um, it's because I've, after college, I chose to start educating myself and learning a bunch of new skills and trying to grow as a person as much as I could. It has made a huge difference in my professional career and in my personal life. And so I wanted to impart that upon my community, which I care a lot about. And I care a lot about your betterment as people as well. So every month I choose a book. I choose one book that I think is the apex of books to learn from in the nonfiction self-improvement category, usually, um, so far. Sometimes they don't, they don't usually take the form, or I try for them not to take the form of like self-improvement books, like how to improve your life in six easy steps or whatever. No, like um, They may take that form sometimes, but there's been two books or three books so far, and they've, uh, what, my big goal for the book club is always to have some kind of actionable thing that you can take away from the book. So I always want something objectively that you can improve your life with like right then as uh, from the book. It should be able to improve your life. Like once you get the concept of the book, it should be able to improve your life right away. The first book in December was our kind of like trial book club that was tidying up with Marie Kondo. And that book changed a lot of people in uh, our community. And I think also changed my life a huge amount, getting rid of over uh, 90, 95% of my possessions and living a totally different lifestyle that I do now. Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins uh, taught me to conquer my inner bitch and made me into a just tougher and harder person. And there's a lot of lessons that I have from that today. And The Five Love Languages, which is the book that we'll be discussing today, is a very special book indeed. Now, I think that most people will not take the time to appreciate or respect this book. And I chose it with that in mind. I, when, I, when I chose the book, I was like, man, I don't think that most of my community is even going to pick this up or is even going to read it. They're going to skip it. But is the book important enough that I'm going to recommend it anyway for the few people that do get it or the people that choose to listen or the people that are like, okay, I'll pick it up. And then it's like, I'll get the concept and, and then I'll read some of it and then I'll put it down. And for those people, I think there will be enough benefit that the book was worth choosing. Okay, so, so why did I choose five love languages? Keeping in mind that at the stage that most of you are in, in your lives, you're either not in a long-term relationship, you may not even be looking for one, or even if you are in one, you have no concept of how this can help you, and much less how this concept can help you in your actual life, like in, in your life, in your like real life, <clears throat> outside of relationships. I, I, I think that for the most people that, that, uh, that are going to have a trouble with this book, this is three problems, right? They either feel like they're far away from the issue, I don't think it applies to them, or they'll let the pretense of the book get to them. The pretense is that Gary Chapman is like a pastor, I think, I think, and he was also a marriage counselor. He had tons of people coming through trying to fix their broken marriages through religion and through him. And if you look at the rates of divorce and, and the just like general discontent of long-term relationships in America. It's a really big problem. And it's a problem that does no apparent solution is getting worse and not better. And now people just don't even get married. <laughs> they, they, like uh, it's a 50% of young people or more uh, are, are getting married later or not at all. 
And so relationships are much more like um, long-term relationships and things like that are, are much more, I don't know, ephemeral and, and uh, things like Tinder and, and like dating apps and stuff like that are much more uh, prevalent now. And there's a lot of reasons for that, which are outside of the context of what I'm discussing today. But the point is the situation, the relationship situation in the first world is not good. Um, I think, I, I think most people are unhappy and they're either tolerating a situation that they don't like, or they are just like living some other, like, uh, some other narrative that doesn't even have to do with what they envisioned was love in the first place. <clears throat> so Gary Chapman, he, he notices that he notices that this is a problem and he notices it because he's counseling for, I mean, probably hundreds and hundreds, sounded like hundreds and hundreds of when I looked into his bio and stuff, different relationships and everybody would come to him and would say, um, hey, I have this problem. It's like, um, my, uh, you know, I, I'm unhappy in my marriage or I can't, um, I'm pulling up some, uh, something here. Hang on. Let's try that. Okay. That way we can switch screens. Okay. Unhappy in my marriage. Um, and uh, I'm uh, not fulfilled. My husband or wife doesn't pay attention to me. Um, there's a lot of infidelity, a lot of cheating, things like that. Like, why does this keep happening? Like, what's going on? And then Gary Chapman says, okay, well, this is a real problem. And he starts to build this system for how to fix this problem. And the system he came up with is five love languages. And once he implemented this system, the, 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 the just critical acclaim of this book, uh, the book alone, much less the actual system that he does now full time, is insane. Um, when, I, when I reviewed this book for the book club, I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. It's 13,000 reviews with 84% of them being five stars and 10% uh, of them being four stars. That's an absurd rating for a book by any measure. And when I looked at this, I said there has to be something here. As a, as a, and I'm going to explain now why I think that this book is so important for everybody and, and why people should give it a shot. To pretense my own situation, I have been in a lot of long-term relationships. I've been in one four-year relationship. I've been in one 13-year relationship. And I've been in a couple of relationships that have been like a year. And in both of those relationships, I think I'm, um, I, to a large degree, I messed up because I did not understand the concepts that are in this book. And that, I, that most relationships are, are going to have trouble if they don't understand the concepts in this book. Also, I think that a very big thing to mention is that I, th and this is not in the book, this is my opinion, that for the five love languages, if the relationship needs to be successful, Gary actually argues against this in the book, but I think that both people need to be invested in improving it. This is something that my 13 relationship taught me is that um, I don't think my, in my previous relationship, the girl that I was with was not very invested in things like this. Uh, I would I would give her a book like this, and she would probably have said, like, this is insane, like, I wouldn't do this. And I, I expect that it's probably the other way around, that most girls would give their boyfriends or husbands books like this, and they would say, ah, you know, that's whatever. And, and that's a big mistake. Um, it, it, it fails to... Um, it fails to... to emphasize the underlying problem that I think is in relationships, which is that... Um, and this is the core concept of the book, so we'll begin like explaining it. The, the, the way that your, your significant other and also other people in your life, which is why I think this book is so important, is that this doesn't just apply to relationships. This applies to every single person you know. And your family is a big one too, but particularly love-based relationships, so family, close friends, and, um, and uh, relationships. Every person in your life may understand and perceive the world in a different way than you do. And it's not apparent that they do until you start to understand the types of people and the responses that they have to certain stimuli. So if, um, if, if you're in a, if you're, if you respond to certain types of emotion a certain way, you may inherently expect other people to respond that way. So if you really like 
receiving gifts, for example, like if you really like getting give, given things, you remember all the things that people have given you and you remember all the, the stuff that people have done for you in the past, you, you may be a person that thinks that giving a gift to someone else it has equal value emotionally, but they may not care at all. And then, you're, and then you're stuck in this kind of like weird shadow realm where you're like, why didn't that work? Uh, I love receiving gifts. I gave this one to my girlfriend. She didn't care. And then she gets mad at you for something totally different. And she says like, hey, where were you tonight? Um, I thought we had something set up. And you're like, oh, like um, I was like gaming with my friends. And she's like really upset at you. And you don't understand why because you, you uh, like there's just this disconnect there. And th this like goes into all these problems and you try to like rationalize it, understand what's going on until you realize that uh, effectively what's happening is, you, and I see this also in like family life and, but also in the context of relationships, your, your girlfriend or boyfriend is speaking Spanish and you're speaking English. It's literally what's happening it, it, is that the the communication that you are both doing is failing because the expectations of that person are different from your internal expectations and neither person is aware of this. So they're both talking to each other in the only way that they know how with the sort of pre-scripted way that they think a relationship should work. And neither of them are getting anywhere because it's not what they really want. <laughs> it's, and so it just turns into this mess. And this is the this is the case with like ninety nine percent of relationships. So the conclusion is that you either tolerate it, or you break up, or maybe there's like these like very few esoteric cases where people are actually in love and they stay in love and their relationship is amazing. But like nobody ever hears about those. You never you never hear about those. It never happens. <clears throat> so pretty much it's like all right, I'm gonna tolerate my old ball and chain or I'm going to uh, peace out, try again. Install Tinder again, boys. So what's going on here? Like, why is it that the first time you meet a girl or a guy, you're crazy about them? And it's like, they're your entire world, and you're just like, this is so amazing. You remember, like, if you ever dated a girl, which applies to most of you, I'm speaking to, like, my mostly male audience here, that feeling of, like, when you can't stop thinking about her and, like... Um, she just like sort of like takes over your world and then you take over her world too. And that lasts a while. If you've ever been in a relationship that's longer than six months, like you are living in that sort of like hyper speed reality and you're ignoring a lot of the idiosyncrasies or things that may later annoy you or, or incompatibilities about this person. <clears throat> okay. We do that because everybody has this kind of thing called the honeymoon phase, which is like this like initial sort of introduction to a person where you just put on the blinders and you see something that is not really there. And, and we think we are trained in this society to think this is love. It's not love. It, it, it's a, it's a, it's a obsession. It's a, there's a good word for it. Hmm. Infatuation, the word I'm looking for. And that happens with everybody that you meet. And, and this girl's going to be fantastic. You're going to be super into her. And then like six months down the line, you'll start to notice things that annoy you. She'll do things that annoy you. Um, if you're older like me, this might happen way faster or, or just jaded. Um, and at this point, you're like, man, this person isn't who I thought they were or they're not doing the things for me that I thought they were. And it's like a game of Pong at this point. It's like, because you start feeling that way, or maybe they've already started feeling that way, it starts to bounce back and forth. The relationship starts to deteriorate because your energy affects it and her energy affects it. And then you just break up or something terrible happens or the infidelity or whatever number of things. And this happens because there isn't real communication about what love is. And nobody is really like, taught it's one of those things where it's like you don't go to school for love you don't go to school for um this you you you, you like don't learn this ever and, and worse you probably learn the wrong way to do things uh just based on like how we function as people 
So what is the right way to do things? Um, what is the solution to this problem? Now that I've outlined that pretty well. The solution is you have to take the time to self-educate, to understand what a person is all about and what effective language they speak that is going to be most effective in stirring them emotionally to appreciate you. First of all, you have some of these. My, my uh, research into this, like beyond the book and whatever, for the purpose of this discussion has shown that like most people have two of these, okay? So it means that out of these five, two of these things are gonna be things that you respond emotionally really well to. Conversely, two of these things are gonna be things that your spouse or your family or whatever respond well to. The easiest way to figure this out is just to have your girlfriend or boyfriend do, it, do the test online for free. If not, though, you can probably guess by the way that their language is, is. <laughs> like, like um, for most women, I'm going to save you a lot of time and tell you that for most women in my experience, it's quality time. And for most people, it's acts of service. For men, it, it, it may be more words of affirmation or physical touch. So for me, my two big ones are acts of service. I really like when people do things for me or when people are doing something that is enriching themselves that I can appreciate and words of affirmation. I like when people give me positive encouragement. It should be really obvious that like when people type something in chat that is really nice, I don't know if anybody's ever watched the stream for a longer period of time. If you ever see anybody that says something in chat that's like really nice, and like some, sometimes somebody occasionally comes in and is like, hey, Melixia, like I really got a lot out of X and like that really improved my life. You will actually notice that I actually copy and paste every one of those messages because that means a lot to me and it affirms what I'm doing. Words of affirmation are super important for me. Quality time, I could maybe spend one day a month, with, uh, that's probably one day every two months with uh, my girlfriend and it wouldn't matter at all. It just doesn't matter at all. Receiving gifts, I totally don't care. I have everything that I want. Physical touch, I don't actually really care that much. It's just not very important to me. So that language is my language. But my the, the woman that I'm with right now, her language is quality time and physical touch. So she gets a lot out of spending uninterrupted and focused time together, which I don't care about at all, right? So if I just go about my business and I tell her a lot that I really appreciate her and that I think she's really special to me. That's not, because that's my language, that's what makes me really happy uh, to hear those kind of things. Do you think that that will be as uh, effective as if I spend an hour of my time with her that's totally focused on listening to her and, um, or playing a game with her or like uh, playing a Switch game or something like that? It's going to be quality time is going to trump that every time. And she's going to feel like someone is speaking her language. And the relationships that she's been in, I'm just speaking like arbitrarily. I don't know if this is true, but like the, what's it's probably true that the relationship she's been in, no other person has spoken this to her or, or they or they've just done the wrong thing. So she now has a relationship where, she is just so ecstatic every day because I'm taking conscious effort to apply these concepts and um, do the things that are important to her. Uh, so, so this idea that like love is like this like thing that should happen automatically and it's like easy is just not true. Um, there are things that should come easy in relationships you shouldn't get a lot of like pushback if you want to do something. Um, but love takes work and, and, and real love I think is worth living, but it takes work. It takes, it takes a lot of work and, and the work is in this. This is how you do it. Check my notes. <clears throat> I think when both people are concentrated on this concept, but it's really important, both people. Usually it's one person, I think, that's unhappy with the relationship, and one person that just sort of doesn't care. 
when both people are focused on this, it's really pretty amazing what kind of relationship you can live. And so my previous relationship uh, of 13 years, I've come to realize was a very toxic relationship in a lot of ways. And uh, unfortunately, it's as much my fault or more my fault than it was hers because I didn't take the time to understand what her needs really were and to communicate that. And I, and I'm, I can tell you, you really don't want to be in a situation with uh, where you don't understand this and you really don't want to be in a situation where um, you, you're with someone who refuses to do this. And, and I think um, on the other side of it, if both of you are working towards this, it's pretty great. It's like pretty crazy how happy you can be in a relationship. And when, when someone that you love is specifically going out of their way to just make your life better. So I, I mentioned that like acts of service is a really important thing to me, right? And um, I will come home and like all my clothes will be done. The whole house will be clean. Um, like my, my certain things will just be in order or dinner will be ready or um, like my life gets actually easier because my girlfriend wants to do things for me that improve my life. And then I'll definitely make sure to take like at least an hour and play Overcooked or talk to her, make eye contact, not be on my phone. And then we both go to bed like, wow, this is a great relationship. And that happens every day, right? There's more to it than that, but I'm just like, what I'm trying to exemplify is like, if you figure this out, it's like you unlock the key to like, it, it's like it's like you unlock the key to like what should be, um, what, what you feel like love should be the entire time. And then like with your family and your friends, if you identify like what these things are, you start to realize that like your friends are really big on like words of affirmation and you start to apply this in the workplace. Or you start to like uh, tell them like compliments or things like that. Maybe you realize that like this sort of like sister or brother that you've had that you're kind of like estranged to and you've never really managed to connect to might just have different needs and you identify those and then you start to apply them. You see your relationships do like a 180 and it's like so fast. It's like crazy how fast it is. In really long-term relationships, sometimes it's not. And Gary Chapman talks about that where like, and particularly I think in relationships where the other person is like kind of resistant, you, you may have to be the one that like takes charge and does this a lot until uh, it improves. But like in a, a small amount of effort can, can actually make a huge difference. Okay, so before I open it up, um, I suspect that a lot of people will write this off, <laughs> and that's okay. Uh, but what I would say is, like, <clears throat> it's totally cool for you to write this off now, and later, just remember the book, and later in your life, it'll become relevant. It's like the like that um, old TV trope of like the fortune teller. And it's like, you will have to fix your relationship someday. And then you're like, whatever, old lady that has a crystal ball that I don't care about. And then you'll walk away. And like 10 years later, you'll realize that they're right. I'm the old lady today. I'm telling you, if you take the time to understand this right now, it'll improve your life. If you take the time, but if you don't, it'll, you'll have to come back to it at some point. Everybody will have a relationship that they'll have to address if you want to have a long-term relationship. And in general, I think that having long-term relationships with a woman or a guy that you can trust, that, that you can believe in, that believes in you, um, that will understand the things that really matter to you is much more valuable than shotgunning Tinder for the next 10 years of your life. And that 
<laughs> there's a sort of inherent soullessness in that that uh is not great. <clears throat> okay. What else? Is there anything I want to say before I open this up to discussion? I've gotten a lot out of this book. I really have. Like, um, my, my now girlfriend introduced it to me. And she is a person who puts a lot of effort and time into researching and understanding what makes her relationships work. I've never been with somebody like that. And it's really cool because taking the, for, for her to take the time to understand the relationship, which is actually like a really huge part of your life. It's, it's a gigantic part of your life. I, um, I do a really, this is a whole other subject, but I track all my time. I track every hour that I spend doing anything because I want to think about, um, uh, th this makes more sense in the context that I'm an executive. So it makes like, I have like the, the time that I spend needs to be effective if I want to accomplish the things in my life that I, I want to accomplish. Last week I spent 22 concentrated hours with my girlfriend. That's a over a part-time job, right? The amount of time that you will spend with your significant other and with your family and with the people where the, to which this is relevant is, is, astronomical. So you, you better be in a position where you really understand their needs. And as importantly, I can't stress this enough. They understand your needs as you can't be the only one doing this. And this is, I, this is a big lesson that I have from previous relationships is that I was the only one doing this. And when I've come across a person who actually cares about doing this also, and both people are geared towards self-improvement, the results are really amazing. It's, it's, it's a totally different type of relationship, totally different thing than I thought was possible. And I think that if you um, start to talk to your close relationships about this concept and you get people on board with it, it'll, um, it'll really, really help your, your life. Because again, it's such, a, such a massive amount of time and, and, and effort and energy will go into your significant other and your relationship and your family. So why not make that time really something that you get a lot out of and, and, and that you enjoy and isn't miserable for you like it is for so many hundreds of thousands of millions of people. And you know what? Like it turns out that you'll enjoy it too. So, so quality time, like it's not a very big deal to me, like I mentioned before, but you know what? I really enjoy those little overcooked sessions or the, the little talks that we have or the, the like, I, I actually end up enjoying them because I, I see that she enjoys them and I legitimately care about her, right? So I, I see her getting a lot out of it too. Physical touch is not a big deal to me. Um, it's a really big deal to her. I, I learned to enjoy it a lot, right? <laughs> like, like it becomes a, a, a good thing. Um, and I also know that there are people that I would not jive well with. Like, so if like receiving gifts is not high on her list, I don't feel like I have to give her a bunch of stuff to win her affection. I wouldn't really want a girl that I would have to do that for. So that helps me identify the kind of people I don't want to date. But quality time is great because it helps teach me, which is her primary love language. It, it, like it helps teach me um, to, to just elevate my life in that way and also like get me out um, – of the house and or, or not or or just like do things that are you know focused. That said, it, it is a challenge for me. I don't I don't like doing it. Um, so so I have to. But once I'm in the process of doing it, I often do. Helps grow me as a person. Any questions before we open up to talking about things? If you really seriously don't enjoy it, then it's probably a good sign that the relationship might not work out. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. What if you have more than two for yourself? Well, every that's a great question, Exver. Everybody has all five. They, they, everybody needs all five, but they're in degrees of importance. So if you wanted to do like a, a one to 10 scale, right? Maybe like on words of affirmation, you're like, I'm like a, like an eight or a nine, 
And then like physical touch is like a four or a five. And then like receiving gifts is like literally like a one or a two. I just don't need it. Quality time is like maybe like a three or a four. And then acts of service is like a seven or an eight, right? And everybody will like, and again, this is why I encourage people to actually do the tests because when you figure out these values, then, and you figure out the values of your SO, it, it's not that like, if somebody sends me a, a gift or something, or, or I receive a gift, that's, that's great. Um, I do appreciate it, but it's not something that I would appreciate as much as someone like sending like a nice comment to me or something like that, right? Um, yeah, so, so everybody has, everybody has, you can just like tally it up. One thing that came up in the X in terms of quality of time was that we were spending lots of time together, but the quality of it wasn't really there. We were sleeping a lot than when we could have gone out. Gifts are nice because it tells someone that you were thinking about them when you weren't with them. So it sounds like you are a person who values receiving gifts. So in the, for the context of this book, you, you don't need to read. I, I mean, I encourage everybody to read the book. I just say, I just think that most people won't. So just grabbing these concepts and thinking about these two things like, um, okay, number one, what do I think the most important thing is to my girlfriend or boyfriend? What is that? And then number two, how do I do more of that? If you just do those two things, your relationship is going to be like way better. If you want to take it a step for, forward from that, communicate that you're like, hi, I listened to this crazy streamer named Alexia, and um, he put me on this book club. And uh, I thought it was dumb, but I started reading the book, and it turns out it's about these like five love languages. I think it's really improve our relationship. Um, what do you think about it? And like, what do you think? And like, here, take this test. The way my girlfriend did it for me, actually, was she didn't even give me the book first. She just sent me a, a test online that was like, do your love languages. I thought it was completely stupid. I was like, oh, okay, I, 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 fine. And, you know, I'm, I'm really into her. So I was like, yeah, sure. Uh, and so <laughs> I did it, and, I, and, and, and it had no meaning to me. Um, but then I think she didn't know me as well. But she didn't realize like the way to actually just communicate that to me was because I'm so obsessed with self-improvement. All you need to do is sit down and be like, listen, I think this has like a significant impact on your life and it'll make you better. And I was like, okay. And, and then I immediately read the book, right? Um, and then understand these concepts and then like started to, to apply them. And I apply these concepts consciously every single day. Um, like <laughs> the, the, uh, if, you, if you take the time to have that conversation, I think it's really valuable. Uh, you, you probably won't be able to do that in the same context with like your employees or you probably shouldn't or employers, excuse me, or like uh, people at work or like people in your family or things like that. But you should like identify like what are the things that they seem to be really um, paying attention to and then do those things and just see what happens. And that conscious effort will take you a long way in your relationships. Walk a little, walk small talk, big thoughts, gonna tell them all just what I want. That street, two streets, I see you and me hanging on the empty swings. Count high, low, lower in my eyes are closed. I'm a superman and it's my show.